Real Virginia is proudly produced by the Virginia Farm Bureau Federation. Since 1926, Farm Bureau has been working to preserve Virginia farms and our rural heritage. Visit our website at virginiafarmbureau.com. Chesapeake Bay, Atlantic to Appalachia, home in my heart always. Hello everyone and welcome to Real Virginia, a show about Virginia agriculture and the people who produce all the wonderful local products we enjoy, brought to you by the Virginia Farm Bureau. Loudoun County farmers support a new school for farm workers learn how to raise tomatoes like the pros do, and we continue our look at Virginia's eastern shore with a profile on Northampton County agriculture. Welcome back everyone. We're coming to you from Hanover Peaches and an orchard like this one can be very labor intensive. There's a new first of its kind facility that has opened up in Loudoun County just for farm employees. As Dave Miller reports, this school is helping to preserve and enhance a qualified workforce for local farm businesses. Loudoun County has a strong heritage of farming and agritourism that is supported by the county's 1,400 farms and rural businesses. And the county wants to keep it that way and even grow it by offering programs and classes for the growing population. A new diverse agriculture school has been created to develop a workforce to meet the needs of an array of agricultural and hospitality-based businesses that call Loudoun County home. They include everything from nurseries, equine operations, vegetable farms, wineries, and hops farms. One of the missing pieces was the labor in the workforce. So we wanted to make sure that we had an education program to continue to build the farmers that, that we need. The knowledge that we have, a lot of this knowledge, is with the farmers themselves. Um, we also are working with uh, Virginia Cooperative Extension so that we're getting some good institutional education, but we're also working with our farmers to get hands-on mentoring and learning on the field and to see if these young folks or second career folks want to do this, okay? So they got to get out in the field, they got to experiment, they got to work with their hands, they got to get, get a good day's work in, and sometimes it's a good month's work in, sometimes they're working for a couple of years, finding the different pieces of what it is they like to do. Arturo Perez is learning about winemaking and working in the vineyards. He hopes to one day become a mentor himself. Dice que, bueno, a mí me gusta la agricultura porque a pasar el tiempo se está perdiendo muchísimas cosas, como es estar trabajando en el campo es, es bueno, nos ayuda a todos, nos ayuda a la naturaleza, ayuda al campo. So, bien, pues, la agricultura es, es, algo, es algo bonito. Aprende uno las cosas a cultivar, cómo, cómo son los alimentos, cómo, se, cómo crece un alimento para que nosotros ingerimos o a ver qué es lo que lleva cada nutriente de cada de ellos. The new Ag School offers a tuition-free certificate program with hands-on experience in all aspects of agriculture in the region. The bigger picture is we want to make sure we're doing newer agricultural process or and mentoring whatever the agricultural process is so that that skill set gets passed on. Not everybody's going to want to work behind a computer the rest of their days, okay? But we're training those kids to do that. I work on a computer, but I also work out in the field. Uh, I'm producing things, I'm dealing with customers, I'm dealing with business. So having that broad breath, doing, being a, pretty good at a lot of things is what our ancestors did as good farmers. One way to preserve Loudoun's open spaces is for these agribusinesses to continue to make the land viable. Beth Sastre, an agent with Loudoun County Cooperative Extension, says the program is a fusion of educational research and learning from experienced farmers by working in the field. So they will have the opportunity to choose, okay, I like the production sector, I will love to do that. Or I like to, the hospitality sector, or I like the, the, the processing sector. So, and we have uh, 
wine uh, growers, we have hop growers, we have vegetable growers, tree fruit growers. So we have a very wide area of horticulture producers in our area. So it's good for them to know how uh, the diversification we have and all the sectors that each one uh, uh, are part of it. Students of the new ag school are sure to come away with a greater appreciation for what farmers and rural businesses do. The ones that really dig into the experience may even decide to start their own businesses and work with the land in Loudoun's beautiful open spaces. In Loudoun County, this is Dave Miller. There are dozens of federal, state, and local efforts to help new farmers get started in Virginia. The Virginia Farm Bureau Federation Young Farmer Program sponsors both a new farmer certification program and the Virginia Department of Agriculture's FarmLink database. That's a website where prospective farmers may connect with those interested in passing on their land or businesses. Virginia Tech, Virginia State University, Cooperative Extension, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture also support the Virginia Beginning Farmer and Rancher Coalition Program, which sponsors and coordinates a number of state and local educational programs. These programs can be easily found by a quick internet search. Hi, today we're going to be talking about trellising tomatoes in the garden from the ground up. Please stay tuned. More than 90 years ago, the Virginia Farm Bureau made a promise to our local farmers to protect and preserve a way of life they'd worked so hard to establish. Today, our insurance agents work to protect all Virginians, not just farmers. Anyone can be a Farm Bureau member and enjoy the many benefits of membership. There's a local Farm Bureau in every county of the state. We think everyone should be a friend of the farm. Visit our website at virginiafarmbureau.com to learn more. Avid gardeners love to grow tomatoes. Today, Chris Mullins shows us a handy technique for trellising tomatoes from the ground up. Hi and welcome. Today we're at Falkier Education Farm and we're going to be talking about trellising tomatoes. Many of you grow tomatoes and you might find that putting cages around them can be expensive and tedious. So we're here today with Mr. Jim Hankins, the executive director here at the farm. Jim, tomatoes are always uh, a little bit of a problem. They always get on the ground. They can and you can find different ways to, to trellis them up but I think you've got a really interesting way to do that. Well, you know, here at the Education Farm this year we're putting in about 3,000 tomatoes. We couldn't possibly put cages around all of them. So most commercial growers use a system called a Florida weave. And it's really, really simple. You're going to put your tomato stakes all in one straight line. Okay. And you're adding a layer of twine about every foot or so. Um, and as the plant grows more, you're going to add another string. And sometimes there is just a natural, you know, some plants will grow quicker than others. Um, and you don't have to come back and redo it. You can put a line in up above them. It's a beautiful thing to do in your morning coffee. I do it most mornings when I get here. Right. I can come in and just capture these tomatoes. Make sure that they are inside the twine. You know, if they get away from me, they'll flop over and you're just putting the tomato plants, you're trying to get the leaves and capture it. So I noticed earlier today you put in these stakes. Yep. About a stake every two to four plants. Or four about plants four plants, stake. yep. Okay, and these are tall stakes. You've also got shorter stakes. Why the difference? Well, you know, there are determinant tomatoes that will not get quite as large or indeterminates. These are d indeterminant tomatoes. They will, I will tie these stakes all the way up to the top and the tomatoes will still grow over a little bit. These are big tomato plants. Right. Um, right. It's really easy, you know, the stakes, you do want to keep them in a good straight line. Okay. Right in line with your tomatoes. We just put them in with a teapot. Okay. You don't have to send it to China, you know, but you want it firm enough so that once this is all tied together, that it can take those heavy winds in a summertime thunderstorm. Makes sense. That makes sense. So this this is used to just tie the string to, right? Yes. And start it. Let's start one right now. It's as simple as running the twine down to the end of the row and you're leaving the wrapper there. Put the twine down, come back. Okay. 
and I'm holding on to the twine with one hand and this is why I have the twine through the PVC. Sure. It's really important you need to use the nylon twine. Okay. You know, morning dew will loosen up the natural hemp fiber twine, right. um, rain, it just won't make it through the season. So this is the best choice. Yes. And you know, you don't have to worry that all of your plants aren't quite tall enough. Right. Um, they'll grow and I'll capture that, you know, as they grow, I just make sure they're tucked in. Sure. And this is more of a solid post at the end. Yes, I always put metal post on the end and um, a couple throughout the road. Just, you know, there's gonna be a lot of weight. We'll be harvesting thousands of pounds of tomatoes off of this. And you wanna make sure that it will hold up to the wind. And when you reach the end, I tie it off. And then just do the same thing. Okay. That makes sense. You go down one side and then you come back down the other side. Yep. And that's gonna, and then every 10 inches or a foot or so, as the plants grow. You need to put in a couple as it's, you know, when they're fairly young to get it upright. But then, you know, as it grows up farther, um, you can space that out okay. up to, you know, 16, 20 inches okay. before you need another line. Jim, this is great. I think this will help a lot of people with their tomatoes. It's a, it's a really good tip. Thank you so much for that and letting us come out to the farm today. You're always welcome. Thanks. Well, for more information about trellising your tomatoes in the garden, please contact your local county extension office and talk to a master gardener. For From the Ground Up, I'm Chris Mullins. We'll see you next time. From the Ground Up is presented with the generous advice and assistance of Virginia Cooperative Extension. Visit their website at ext.vt.edu. Inspired by the strange bedfellows of tilapia and peaches, Chef Maxwell shares a recipe that should wake up the whole family. Up next. The State Fair of Virginia is known for its family-friendly atmosphere, exciting attractions, and of course, fabulous fair food. The most important focus continues to be youth and adult livestock competitions, and dozens of competitions where other Virginians can win a coveted State Fair blue ribbon. Everything from prize vegetables to baked goods to crafts and photography are featured each year as the best of the best. To learn more about this year's State Fair Virginia, visit our website at statefairva.org. Fresh Virginia peaches make a great summer dessert, but our Chef Maxwell has a different idea. He's making spicy peach salsa to pair with tilapia in the heart of the home. We're here at Meadow Hall in Meadow Event Park in Doswell, Virginia. And today we're gonna to be playing with a couple of Virginia grown products. We've got peaches, uh, which, eh, well, we don't get as much praise as uh, or publicity as Georgia. Um, we do a good job with peaches. And we've got some farm raised tilapia. Uh, tilapia is delightful fish if it's grown right. And here in Virginia, we grow it right using a uh, complex system that keeps the water clean and, and produces a beautiful product. All right, so we're gonna do the, a fried tilapia with a peach salsa. We're gonna start with the peach salsa. And a peach salsa has to have, of course, peaches. So we put the peaches in a bowl. And I've, uh, these are peeled and diced peaches. And I've got um, some lime juice that I'm gonna sprinkle in here. And to get good juice out of your lime, it's best to roll it. Just kind of roll it to crush the inside a little bit and loosen up the juices. I've done that with this, so uh, gonna have about two tablespoons or so of lime juice in there. All right, now I'm gonna put some red onion in here. All right, I've got poblano pepper, banana pepper, habanero pepper, also known as a scotch bonnet, um, and some jalapeno. And this can make a nice spicy salsa. You can adjust the peppers any way you want. Use red pepper, green pepper, um, bell pepper if you want. Uh, I like it nice and spicy. Now, habanero or, or scotch bonnet is very, very hot. Uh, jalapeno is less so, and these other two are more sweet than hot. Right? but they still have some heat. 
All right, so I've got that. I'm going to add a little sugar. And what the sugar will do, it'll cause the peaches to sweat. And it'll let the peach juice mix in with all the rest of it. Right. Okay, this is mixed up good. Don't want to bruise the peaches too much, um, but I want to make sure that that sugar gets distributed well so it pulls the juice out of the peaches. It works just like salt does, but salt's not a good combo for this. Right. Both of them are solutes, right, which means they react with the water. All right, now I'm going to get ready to do the fish. And I've got here a plate with a mixture of cornmeal, um, flour, panko breadcrumbs, which are uh, Japanese style. All right. And I've got another plate, and I've got an egg here that I've whisked. I'm putting that down in the plate. All right. And in the third plate, I'm going to put some flour. Now, I don't use a lot of salt and pepper in my food, right? Because I use mostly fresh food, and fresh food's got good flavor, and I just use enough to to pull out that flavor. Right? But with the fish, I want salt and pepper in the first coating, so that it gets close to the fish itself. Now I've got these beautiful beautiful tilapia. You can see it's got a nice red color. Right? I'm going to get this nice and coated with flour, then put it into the egg. Just dip it around a little bit. Let the excess shake off. And what the egg is there for is just to hold on to the next coating, which is this seasoned uh, breadcrumb mix. I've got some dried thyme. And, and some cayenne pepper in here. All right, and on it goes. Right. Tap it in good, turn it over. Tap it in good. We've got this, and I can see that this is the side I want to, to face up on the plate, so I'm going to put that side down in the fat. Now we're going to cook that for two minutes on each side. And while that's cooking, I'm going to clean my mess up a little bit. All right, I finished them, pulled them out to a little paper towel to drain. I'm going to leave it there for a couple of seconds, and now I'm going to set my plate up. I'm going to put this one down. Then I'm going to take the other one, kind of go across it to give some architectural interest there. And now for the salsa. go. Pan fried tilapia with peach salsa. Join us next week on Heart of the Home when we get to play with more great Virginia food. Recipes from the Heart of the Home can be found on the Virginia Farm Bureau website at vafb.com as well as on Chef Maxwell's website at chefjohnmaxwell.com. Peaches share the same growing season and climate needs as apples in Virginia. The size of the crop varies from year to year depending on how many blossoms survive the annual late season frosts. Virginia growers harvested 3,900 tons of peaches from 1,200 acres in 2016, worth $5.2 million. That's less than in previous years as the number of peach orchards, which are primarily located in the state's Piedmont and mountainous areas, have declined in the Old Dominion. Most Virginia peach orchards are quite small, less than an acre in size. As we continue our tour of Virginia's Eastern Shore, we celebrate Northampton County. It's a community that's rich with agriculture and aquaculture, helping to feed Virginia. 
rich, fertile farm fields dot Northampton County. Bordered by the Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic Ocean, the area was settled by English colonists in the early 1600s. It officially was named Northampton County in 1642. More than 147 farms on 56,000 acres produce everything from fresh produce to nursery plants to wheat. It's our geographic positioning, being here on the shore on the peninsula, being surrounded by Atlantic Ocean on our east and Chesapeake Bay on our west. The water temperatures uh, in the spring are very beneficial, rise because of uh, and bring soil temperature up. The uh, fall, it helps keep the soil temperature warm in the fall, have some later frost. Uh, our soil type here is absolutely wonderful for growing just about anything. If you can figure out how to harvest it, you can pretty much grow it here. So it's a, it's a great location for farming. Northampton County is the state's top producing county for vegetables, melons, potatoes, and sweet potatoes. It is also a top wheat producing and the top aquaculture producing county. Northampton County farms generate $93 million in cash receipts each year. Northampton County is so unique in agriculture because we not only have small grains, we also have a lot of vegetables and we also have aquaculture. So that really rounds us off as a really great uh, production area for the state. Agriculture and aquaculture continue to be the top industries here. However, over the last decade, many farmers have adapted in response to rising production cost. It's their best chance to keep the county's agriculture industry growing. Sturgis is hopeful for the future of farming in the coastal community as the next generation steps up to continue to work to keep their land in production. I have two young sons now they are just coming back into the business just uh, recently out of college the last few years and they're establishing themselves in, in agriculture. Uh, and they are growing some fresh market vegetables to be sold locally and uh, that's how they're gaining their entrance. Uh, so they can't afford large equipment at this point so they have to start slow and work their way up and it's the way they can do it and harvest it themselves. It's one thing I'd like to look into more of uh, maybe do the farm to, farm to school program, see if we can't get into some of our local uh, schools here. Hopefully, uh, that's us say we're starting, they're starting out here and uh, hopefully build it up to something like that. In the next 10 to 15 years, I see agriculture continuing to grow and prosper here on the Eastern Shore. We have our local governments are very supportive of agriculture and with the nutrient management plans and uh, different regulations that the farmers are having to follow, we're con continuing to, to make our waters cleaner and to still be able to farm in a, in a fast and great environment. Tourists consider the area one of Virginia's best kept secrets and flock each year to the clean sandy beaches. But what they also find is some of the best fresh produce at area markets. That gives Northampton County growers a ready customer base. We grow some of the best vegetables in the state. Uh, not to take anything from anywhere else, anybody else, but uh, we can grow the healthy, delicious tasting tomatoes, potatoes, sweet corn, cucumbers, whatever vegetable you can think of, we can grow it here and it's it's health benefit that people here can eat locally from buying from the local markets. Farmers markets and, and fruit and vegetable stands are all over Northampton County um, where they we've got probably six or seven different locations throughout the county where you can go and get fresh fruit and vegetables. The farmers of Northampton County have a keen sense of pride for their unique community. They are adapting and investing in their future, preserving their lands while continuing to honor their past. That's going to do it for this edition of Real Virginia. We are so glad you could join us to help us celebrate the bounty that Virginia has to offer. Whether it's in your home, your landscape, or your garden, we are proud to say that this is Real Virginia. So for everyone from the Virginia Farm Bureau, thanks for watching. Make it a good week. Chesapeake Bay